Well, conservative State Senator Joe Gruder is a former chair of the state Republican Party, has endorsed the recreational marijuana ballot measure, despite the efforts of Governor Ron DeSantis and the Republican Party of Florida to tank it. The Tallahassee Democrat reports the Sarasota lawmaker, who has served a combined eight years in the Florida House and Senate, said in a press release that his support is a common-sense decision that prioritizes individual freedom, health, safety, and economic growth. By legalizing recreational marijuana for adults, we can give Floridians access to safe products, generate significant revenue for critical public services, and create new job opportunities for Floridians. If Amendment 3 gets at least 60% of the vote, non-medical marijuana possession of up to three ounces would be legalized, with no more than five grams in concentrated form for people who are 21 years and older. Gruder's support represents a notable opposition to the governor, who has taken a hard stance against the measure, saying it will reduce quality of life and cause Florida to reek of weed. So, Janelle, why is Gruder breaking with the governor and, his, uh, and the Republican Party? I don't think uh, there's much surprise in the political world about Joe Gruder's breaking from A, Ron DeSantis, and B, the GOP. He has a long record of kind of being almost a pioneer, if you will, in terms of who and what he supports. He was one of the earliest supporters of President Trump when he was first running for president in 2016, um, and, and he stuck with it. So, you know, I think that loyalty... Um, it kind of signals something to watch. Are we going to see President Trump come out and endorse this thing? I mean, that's a big what if. It's a huge question mark, and it's. But it could be politically advantageous for him to do that. You know, in a state where he went from an absolute shoe into winning to Democrats viewing Florida as back in play. You know, we we discussed that a moment ago. Is is it really? But you know, he could really pad that if he were to, because this is an issue that is popular across party lines. Like, while Republicans are more likely to be opposed to Amendment 3, there's a lot of them that do want this to happen. So I think that's an interesting thing to keep an eye out for. Natalie, I gotta ask you, the hemp industry is against recreational marijuana and has given $5 million to the Florida Republican Party. Why is the hemp industry opposed to recreational marijuana? Well, if you look at the landscape right now, um, whether it is alcohol, whether it is medical marijuana, hemp and then potentially recreational marijuana. There is a marketplace that all of them are going to be competing in. Obviously, how that manifests and the regulatory piece of that is really essential. And that's what I would like to make sure that everybody is thinking about and focused on. Um, whereas you have a three-tier system that's regulated and is you know, very um, you know, robustly you know, enforced within the state for all of our alcoholic beverages, right now, Hemp does not have that same regulatory. There has been attempts the last two legislative sessions to impose that. A bill was passed. It was vetoed by the governor with some very strong directives on where he wants to see that go. So, you know, for those of us who support it, and you go and you vote yes on election day, those of you that don't, you vote no. But if it passes, what we should all be worried about is the regulation. Hemp is largely drinks and clothing and creams and things like that. Right. Why is it afraid of recreational marijuana? So the hemp products, again, you, you have the non-consumables, but the consumables, whether that be infused beverages, alcoholic beverages alike, right, they're going to be in that same marketplace in the, in the store. Um, if you have, and you've got CDB, and you've got different kind of lotions and creams, but from a consumption, if some, a consumer has the ability to go into a convenience store, go into a grocery store, go into a bar, and they have the option to purchase a beer, standardized, craft, a liquor, a spirit, you know, now they have the option for that hemp product. That is gonna compete in that marketplace. Mm -hmm. But moreover, if medical marijuana is not the only game in town for flour and you have recreational marijuana, will people opt to not go and purchase those products and use that instead. Again, it's a marketplace issue. Okay, yeah. it's all about fighting well, for the yeah, market. I mean, this has been a huge issue with the hemp uh, bill the last couple of years in Tallahassee, and the hemp industry is elated that Governor DeSantis vetoed Colleen Burton's bill a couple months ago. And this is, uh, you know, a legal payback, if you will. They're very gratified that he did that. They want to help him out uh, because of these, these THC-infused products. Um, but the hemp people thought that truly, they blamed truly for the bill the last couple of years, whether that was true or not. Um, going back to, you mentioned the governor and saying the, the state is going to reek of weed. 
you know, there's a lot of maybe solid arguments you can make against this amendment. Governor DeSantis is one, is kind of a tired one as far as I'm concerned. And go, uh, I talked to Joe Gruders on Wednesday. Joe sponsored the legislation that allowed cities to ban smoking on public beaches a couple years ago that finally passed. He says he is absolutely against any type of smoking of any time, uh, any kind out there. So when this bill, uh, the amendment, if it does get passed, obviously there's going to be an implementing bill behind that. That's going to be very interesting to see how the legislature does this. You know, when they pass the medical marijuana, they didn't allow flour for a couple of years. DeSantis did change that. Uh, so, you know, some of the, the hysteria, if you will, DeSantis says you can smoke on uh, 80 joints and you can go into schools. That is not going to happen. That's good scare tactics. And uh, anyway. Robin, I just wondered, does this issue on the ballot drive turnout and, and, and does it encourage young people, especially, or people under 40 to come out and vote? I think I think uh, I think so. I think that uh, uh, Amendment Three is an opportunity for uh, for one it to be decriminalized. A lot of people are in jail because of it. Um, I don't think, uh, as they they have indicated, or I've heard that it's going to drive people to to smoke more weed or people that haven't smoked uh, marijuana. They're going to you know now smoke it and go to uh, heavier drugs. Um, but it is a factor in regards to uh, a, a turnout. Mm -hmm. So I think that it will be a, 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 a turnout uh, mechanism. It is a turnout mechanism. Okay.